Hey everybody, when we left off we had a working game, well almost a game here, we had a bouncing ball uh, with collision that, that we can control with the user input, had a break in there, I can stop or almost stop it if I need to, I can speed it up again, and then we were keeping score every time we successfully bounced it off this flower shape in the middle, uh, we were raising the score by one. So we've got something that looks a little bit closer to a game. Today, what I want to do, I've noticed that my code is getting kind of unwieldy. So it's a big mess. There's a lot of code here. And just looking at this, it's not really very clear exactly what it does, especially if you haven't been involved in writing this along the way. So I want to take a minute to simplify my code with functions. And then I'm going to try to make a second ball and see if we can turn this into a two-person game. So that's the goal to for today. First of all, to simplify the code with functions. What's a function? Well, a function is just a block of code that you can define and then sort of forget about. Just give it a name that makes sense and forget about it. This is an essential thing that programmers do. It's, um, it's called abstraction. One of the main concepts, concepts in computer science. Let's um, start by clicking on the more blocks tab here and then just make a block. And what I'm going to do here, I've got all of this code, these if statements, there are four of them. And what they really do is just check to see if it's at a wall and then bounces it. I'm going to take that code and just put it in a block called bounce off walls. And that's pretty clear what it does. I'm going to hit OK there. And here I get a new header block in purple. And I'm going to take all of this code and put it in there. And then I'm going to shove it way off to the side where I can kind of forget about it. And then I'm going to grab this new block that I have and put it right here. So instead of all four of those if statements, now I've just got bounce off walls, which is exactly what those if statements were doing. Let's see if the code still works. Yeah, looks like it works just the same. And I can continue on like this. Uh, this, well, these two lines here just update uh, the position of the ball. So let's make a simple block for that. Make a block, update ball position, a new header, and I'll take, well, let's see, let's pull that out for a second, then I can grab these guys easily. And we'll shove that off to the side over here. And then we'll put this back in the forever loop. And we'll take our update ball position and put it there. And then this chunk checks if it um, is um, uh, touching the flower shape and then bounces it off the flower. So let's just go ahead and make a new block for that. Bounce off flower. And we'll pull this. Let's see. We still want the bounce off walls there. This is our bounce off flower code. We'll shove that over here where we don't have to think about it anymore. And now we'll take bounce off flower. All right, now, theoretically, this code should run just as it did before. It seems to be bouncing off the walls. It's bouncing off the flower. I can speed it up, slow it down. So this is co code is exactly what it was before, but there's an advantage here. It's much more readable. So what I can see is we're setting the score to zero. We're putting a random number into the X and Y of the vector. And then we're through the forever loop. We're updating the ball position, bouncing off the flower, bouncing off the walls every time. So functions are a great way to make your code a little more easy to handle. Now, what I want to do is make a second ball. And I think I'm going to make a game that two people can play against each other on the same keyboard. One person would have the up and down and left and right arrows, and the other player would have the WASD keys. And one player would be trying to raise their score by bouncing it off the flower. The other player would be try to, trying to stop that from happening or lower the other player's score by crashing into them. So two players with two different goals, and they'd both be affecting the score. So let's um, see how we can do that. Really, I want a lot of the same behavior in this ball. I want it to bounce off the walls. 
So I think I'm just going to make a copy of it and see what happens. So I'm going to right click here and duplicate. So now I have ball two. And uh, if I go into the scripts on ball two, you'll see they're, they're exactly the same now. So that all seems to work. And if I start it up, they start bouncing around. Hmm. OK. And if I use the, oh, so here's the problem. If I use the up and down keys, um, some weird behavior starts to happen, left and right keys, because I've got the same variable controlling at, uh, the vectors for each one of these. I don't really want that. I want them to have different speeds and directions and so forth. Hmm. Well, let's stop this and think about it. What I did really was make a mistake uh, a long time back. So let's look at ball number one again. When I created this vector x and vector y variables, I just created them. Um, so I chose make a variable. And I had this choice for all sprites or for this sprite only. And I just left the default there. If I had chosen for this sprite only, then I would have a separate vector x and vector y for each ball, which is what I want now. Luckily, I can fix that pretty easily. I can delete all of these variables without changing the code over here and then create new ones that are specific only um, to a certain sprite. So let's, let's try that. I'm going to right click and we're going to delete the score variable here. Actually, I wanted the score variable to be the same for both. Let's put that back. Uh, but I do want the, the vector x and vector y to be different for both. So let's delete both of those. OK, and so right now we're in the ball sprite. So let's make a variable. We'll call it vector x again, and for this sprite only. And then we'll make a variable vector y this sprite only. Now we're going to go to ball 2, and we're going to do the same thing. So vector x for this sprite only, and vector y for this sprite only. Now they should have separate sets of variables. Let's see what happens. We can see the ball vector variables, the ball 2 vector variables, and the score. Right now, they're both set to score by bouncing off the flower. We'll have to fix that later. But let's, um, let's run it and see what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. So it looks like they can, they can bounce separately and have different values. So that's great. I do have one problem here, and that is in ball two, I still have the arrow keys controlling it. So we want separate keys for that. But that's easily fixed. So we can just change the up arrow to the W key, the down arrow to the S key, and the left area, left arrow to the A key, and the right arrow to the D key. Now we're going to need a different break uh, for this guy. I think I'm going to choose Z. OK, so now they should each have different controls. Let's start this up again. So let's do, so I'm controlling this guy that's bouncing around here. The, the ball 2 is kind of stuck at the top right now. And we've got the break on this guy. All right, so let's try ball 2 control. So I'm going to try to pull him down. Oh, there he goes. And to the left a little bit, and to the right, and Z to break. All right, so that seems to be working just fine. The other thing that we need to change here is how the scoring works. Because, well, also, it would be nice to tell the balls apart. Um, that maybe should be the first thing I do. They're both the same color. We can change that pretty, pretty easily. Right now, we're in the scripts tab, but there is a costumes tab, too. So let's change ball to, to purple. Well, that was easy enough. And uh, so this will be a lot easier to tell them apart. And then, in addition to collision with the walls and the flower shape, we want the balls to collide with each other. So that's going to add um, to the complexity of the program. And then we also, when there's a collision, 
between the two balls, we want the score for purple to go, well, we want purple to affect the score. We want purple to bring the score down. Whenever yellow hits the flower, the score goes up. Whenever purple hits yellow, the score goes down. So that's that's the nature of the game. So purple would be hoping for a negative score. Yellow would be hoping for a positive score. Let's see if we can do that. First of all, we don't want the score to go up anymore when, when ball two, when purple hits um, the flower. So let's see if we can make that happen. I'm in the ball two sprite, and we're going to just change that block, the bounce off flower, so that it no longer has the change score by one. So let's see if we can um, see if that's working. I'm going to put the break on number one, and then we'll see if we can get purple to bounce. Aha, uh -huh, that did not affect the score. OK, so that part worked. Let's see then if we can detect collision between the two um, the two balls. So let's start with the purple ball. What I want to do when I collide with the yellow ball is I want to bounce and I want to raise my score. So those are the two things. I'm going to make a block to do this. So I'm through my forever loop every time I'm updating the ball position and bouncing off the flower if necessary and bouncing off the walls if necessary. And now I'm going to bounce off yellow ball. OK. So here's my bounce off yellow ball uh, block. What do I need to do? Well, I need to raise the score by one. So let's grab the score. And we're going to change score by one. That's great. And then let's see if there's something I can borrow here. We've got all this bouncing going on. Um, looks like this block would be pretty useful. I'm going to duplicate that. We'll bring it back over here to my my bounce off yellow wall block. Now this one says if touching a flower shape. I'm going to change that to if touching ball. That's the yellow ball. And the, all the rest of this code is going to work. It's, it should bounce me off of the yellow ball. So hopefully that works. We also want the yellow ball to bounce off of the the purple ball. So we're going to we're going to change that as well. But first I've got to make sure I've got that block in here. So let me grab the bounce off yellow ball block. Okay. And now let's go into the sprite the scripts for this sprite and we'll make a new block and this is bounce off ball. All right, so I'm not going to change the score in this case. What I'm really going to do is just bounce. So I'm going to look for my, aha, here's that same block. We're going to duplicate that. Whoops, where did it go? Oh, I, I shoved it inside the other one. That was confusing. Meh. OK, that's the piece I wanted to duplicate. Now we're not going to change the score. So I'm going to get rid of that part. And we want to choose uh, ball 2. And the rest of this just bounces it. All right, so now theoretically, if they touch each other, they should bounce. And the score should go down. Oh, we wanted the score to go down by 1, not up by 1. Let's go back to ball 2. Ha. Huh. Change score by negative one. Here we go. And I think I forgot. Uh, I've got to put the bounce off purple ball in the actual forever loop. OK, now we can forget about this part of the code. All right, so all my functions are piled up over here. I've got my keyboard control, and I've got my main loop for my program. Let's, um, let's see what happens here. I'm just going to let them bounce. Oh. They did bounce off each other, and the score is going down and down and down. Hmm. So it looks like I must have made a mistake there. The part where score goes down by one. Was here in the bounce off yellow ball. Oh, I didn't get it inside the if statement. Aha. So I'm actually 
making the score down go down every time. So let's put it inside the if statement. That's why. So every time through the loop, it was checking the bounce off yellow ball. And the first thing it did was reduce the score by one and then see if it was touching the ball. Now it'll see if it's touching the ball and only reduce the score uh, by one if it is. So let's start again. Aha, negative one. Oh, back to zero because yellow hit the flower. All right, so now we have a competing set of goals here. Purple wants to hit yellow. Yellow just wants to hit the flower. And we have some some keyboard controls. The yellow can use that to try to get in a good pattern, and, and purple can try to use that to hit yellow more often. So this looks like it could actually be a game that might um, start to be some fun. All right, so that was a little bit of work with functions and uh, adding a second sprite and uh, setting up some conditions for a game. Thanks, everybody.